you stand. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worldly magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, and heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light, enkindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me in the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garment. And as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May we join together in Psalm, a portion of Psalm 147. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates and has blessed your children within you. He has established peace on your borders. He satisfies you with the finest wheat. He sends out his command to the earth, and his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool, and scatters hoarfrost like ashes. He scatters his hail like breadcrumbs, who can stand against his cold. He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and his judgments to Israel. He has not done so to any other nation.
To them he has not revealed his judgments. Hallelujah. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Galatians. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child, and if a child, then also an heir through God. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He himself was not the light, 
but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory is of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart, who has made Him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
What he did in those short 22 years was somehow integrate the message of the gospel into his own life. He went to the manger. He became the manger in which Jesus could be born and grow and do his work and thrive. And that is the way that we remember him. There is possibly one other association we can make between uh, Venceslas and Jesus, and that is early martyrdom. Both of them had only short periods of ministry uh, out in the world before they were done in by the forces that were against them. They brought light and life into the world, and that was squashed. It was, they were murdered by people who wanted to do something else. And you know, if, if you are the leader or you have a leadership position in a place that's known uh, for being guided by power and wealth and graft and corruption and delusion and all of those different untruths, all of those different kinds of things that happened in those places in that time, brutality, um, lack of caring for other human beings, if you come into that with a different way of wanting to do things, you are going to be threatening to the people who are in power. They are going to see that drifting away from them and will do everything they can to stop it. And so we have the Gospel of John today, the prologue of the Gospel of John. And by the way, the prologue of the Gospel of John, this just exquisite piece of literature and Gospel writing, if you want to know about the Gospel of John, everything you need to know is in this prologue. The entire Gospel essentially just builds on what is set down here in this prologue. And one of the things it says is, the true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own. And his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. What the gospel very honestly describes in this piece that lays the foundation for everything that follows is what is essentially the contest that was set up with the arrival of Jesus. I mean, before Jesus, there wasn't one. Everybody just kind of went, did what they wanted to do, acted whatever way they wanted to make. It didn't matter. But with Jesus, suddenly it matters. And everyone who encounters that story, everyone who encounters that baby, has to come to terms with that contest. Because you can go the old way of the world that's egocentric, that's based on us wanting to be gods ourselves, that based on all those things we talked about. And you can let that be who you are and act accordingly. Or you can become the manger, the place where Jesus was born, the place where life, that life of God comes into the world, the place that brings light. And if you decide for that, then you act accordingly. And it makes a difference every day, every moment, how you kind of walk through the world. And it makes a difference, certainly, in how we will be remembered. Whether we will be that manger or whether we will walk away from it. How will you be remembered? What difference does that baby make in your life?
you stand. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for this community, the nation, and the world, just and the proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, for those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy, for the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Morris, our bishop, Paul, our rector, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in this church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray for Rick, John, Ron and Dean, Jody, Agnes, Gurley, Carla, Helen, Grace, Anita, Lynn, Anna, Don, and Haley. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We offer thanksgivings for the presence in our midst of Don Fellows, Sandy Sharp, and Sue Bowen, who celebrate their birthdays this week, and we pray God's richest blessings upon them in the year ahead. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. We pray for Arthur, Clara, Johnny, Nancy, Sarah, Thurl, Marguerite, and Amanda, and for those who love them. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. O 
God our Creator, you have divided our life into days and seasons and called us to acknowledge your providence year after year. Accept your people who come to offer their praises and in your mercy receive their prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. It's good to see you all today. Thank you for being here on this first Sunday uh, in the season of Christmas as we continue our celebrations and uh, welcome to all those who have joined us on Zoom today. It's good uh, to have you with us today. Just a few announcements. Uh, first of all, the, the drill for this morning is the same as usual. You know what it is, the wafers, the alms basins back in the back, that sort of thing. Um, this week is New Year's week, of course, and our, the church office will be closed on <coughs> New Year's Eve and New Year's Day in observance of the New Year's holiday. <coughs> Excuse me, we're normally closed on Friday anyway, uh, but we should be here Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, uh, depending on what's going on. Uh, I'm, next week, the first full week of January, my schedule is just a complete train wreck. Uh, so I may try and take a little time out uh, just to decompress this week, but we'll have to see how that goes because there's a lot going on. There are pastoral things happening. And so as we have done for the last several months, we're just going to take it one day at a time. Uh, as we near the end of the year, I wanted to thank you all for your giving to the church. Uh, some of you have been dropping your gifts in the alms basin, some mail them into the church, some have been using uh, the website for that. But we have had a difficult year and it's been full of challenges and some of those have been economic challenges and of course there's been a lot of uncertainty and uncertainty is just hard to live in over a period of time. So I just want you to know how grateful we all are for your gifts to the church and your giving and the way that you've continued to support this community uh, because that allows us then to do the work of Jesus in the world. It allows us to be that bit of light in this corner that we inhabit and also to build a, a solid foundation for what's going to happen at the next step once we begin to come out of the pandemic. I know it hasn't been easy. Uh, and I just wanted to thank you all for the way that you have so faithfully uh, been about your giving. It just means more than you know. And finally, uh, from all the staff at Grace Memorial, a happy new year to you. May it be a safe one. Whatever you're doing, be careful and stay well. And when we gather together next week for Christmas too, we'll be in 2021. And it's about time. It's great to see you today. Ascribe to the Lord the honor of His name. Bring offerings and come into His court.
hearts. <coughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ your only Son to be born for us who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the Word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of of me. After supper he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this, for the remembrance of Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with Mary, the mother of the Lord, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, 
we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and to make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the Word made flesh, join heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ.